In this video, we are visiting Missouri Headwater State Park, where three rivers converge to create the Missouri River. To the left, we see the Missouri River. As we pan, we can see a wide sweeping meander of the Gallatin River in its floodplain. A floodplain is the flat area around a river extending from its channel to the edge of the wide valley. Let's look a little more closely at the water flowing in the channel. What can you observe about the velocity of the water flowing in the inside versus the outside of the bend in the river? Around the inside, it flows more slowly. Around the outside, more quickly, because it has farther to travel. Looking at the two sides of the stream channel, we see certain features. What is this pile of sediment around the inside of the bend? That is a point bar. Do you know how a point bar forms? As the water flows around the inside of the bend, the velocity decreases, and so the competence, or the ability of water to transport sediment, decreases, and so sediment is deposited. With this in mind, can you describe the process on the other side of the stream? The increase in velocity of water flowing around the outside of the bend increases the competence and leads to erosion along the outside bank of the channel. This continued erosion has led to the creation of the bluff that you see on the right. The point bar is always on the inside of the bend and the cut bank on the outside. See here where the river bends to the right? The point bar is on the right. And further downstream, as the river bends to the left, the point bar is on the other side. Here we are looking at a bend in the Missouri River. On the other side, you can see the point bar. Let's look closely at the cut bank. You can see blocks of the upper part of the bank that have fallen down a steep slope into the stream. This material will be flushed downstream, and more of the bank will continue to collapse into the water, thus continuing erosion at the cut bank. So, as a small bend in a river's path causes erosion at the cut bank and deposition at the point bar, this erosion and deposition will cause the curve of the bend to become more exaggerated. Then, as the bend gets bigger, the erosion and deposition are enhanced by the differences in water velocity. Over time, the channel will develop a more sweeping bend, and it will migrate laterally. As we look at a cut bank beneath our feet and a point bar across the stream, let's sketch this migration and cross section. Over time, erosion occurs at the cut bank and deposition occurs at the point bar, causing the channel to migrate. As the cut bank continues to erode to the left and the point bar continues to grow from the right, the channel moves to the left. In this satellite image of a meander in the Ohio River near Evansville, Indiana, you can see what are called scroll bars that were left behind during the migration of this channel. The bend in the channel has migrated to the south, and the bend has become more and more exaggerated. Looking at this time lapse of satellite images of the Paraná River in South America, you can see that over 28 years the river channel has moved. We can trace the location of the river in 1984 and see how far it has moved by 2012. You can also see the scroll bars that have been left behind. Now we return to the Missouri headwaters to take a wider look around the area. The flat area to the right of the channel is the floodplain. At this meander of the Gallatin River, the channel is at the edge of its wide valley. You can see the flat area to the left of the channel is uniformly higher than the current floodplain. What will happen in this area in the future? A. The channel will migrate to the right, making the valley wider. B. The channel will migrate to the left, making the valley wider. Or C. There will be no change in the location of the channel. The correct answer is B. 
the channel will continue to erode on the left side at the cut bank, which will make the lower elevation floodplain even wider. When a river erodes laterally and creates a floodplain as described, it is called an erosional floodplain. Floodplains can be depositional as well. Depositional floodplains are produced by major fluctuations in conditions, such as changes in base level or climate. The floodplain in California's Yosemite Valley is one such feature, it was produced when a glacier gouged the valley floor about 300 meters, 1,000 feet, deeper than its former level. After the glacial ice melted, running water refilled the valley with alluvium. The Merced River currently winds across a relatively flat floodplain that forms much of the floor of Yosemite Valley. When a river erodes laterally and creates a floodplain as described, it is called an erosional floodplain. Floodplains can be depositional as well. Depositional floodplains are produced by major fluctuations in conditions, such as changes in base level or climate. The floodplain in California's Yosemite Valley is one such feature, it was produced when a glacier gouged the valley floor about 300 meters, 1,000 feet, deeper than its former level. After the glacial ice melted, running water refilled the valley with alluvium. The Merced River currently winds across a relatively flat floodplain that forms much of the floor of Yosemite Valley. Incised Meanders and Stream Terraces We usually find streams with highly meandering courses on floodplains in wide valleys. However, some rivers have meandering channels that flow in steep, narrow bedrock valleys. Such meanders, pictured in figure 16.28, are called incised meanders, incisum equals to cut into. Smart figure 16.28 incised meanders. Aerial view of incised meanders of the Colorado River on the Colorado Plateau. Photo by Michael Collier. Tutorial. Incised meanders. How do these... Hello, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another smart figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe what processes would have had to have take place to produce an incised meander. In a previous smart figure video, we talked about meandering, and we said that as river currents make their way around curves in the stream, the strongest part of the current ends up getting deflected towards the edge. This generates erosion at the cut bank and deposition at the point bar. However, sometimes we see meandering streams that are locked at the bottom of deep canyon. The meander is no longer moving side to side in the same way as in the, the image that we just looked at. Instead, it seems locked in place by being incised into bedrock. So we call these incised meanders. Now we know that streams develop frequently in this sort of a fashion, where you start off with a narrow V-shaped stream. So up here in the upper right, you can see that a V-shaped profile as that stream is cutting into that landscape. As time goes by and the river begins to meander, it moves side to side and erodes the sides of the valley. So it ends up defining a well-developed river valley. And then that river valley can actually get wider over time. So here's the overall river valley. Of course, the river is just a very small part of that. But as it meanders, it tends to a focus erosion when those meander edges touch the edge of the river valley. At the bottom, we've got these very nicely well-developed meanders, and you can see even some oxbow lakes there. How can we get from that situation to the incised meander that we saw in the previous picture? Well, I hope you would think it probably has something to do with base level. And so that is indeed the case. In order to get an incised meander, you have to start off with a meandering stream, like this example here. But then that has to experience a change in base level so that it no longer is moving side to side. It, its energy goes into cutting downward into the landscape beneath it. In other words, it incises. And once that happens, you can end up getting the most spectacular landscapes with these big looping meanders that are at the bottom of big deep canyons. Thanks very much for your attention. This has been another smart figure.